Hi, uh, my name is Bohdan and today I want to cover the topic The Judgment of the Beautiful by Kant. The critique of judgment begins with an account of beauty. The initial issue is, uh, what kind of judgment is it that results in our saying, for example, that is a beautiful sunset? Kant argues that such aesthetic judgments, so judgments of taste, must have four key distinguishing features. First, they are disinterested, meaning that we take pleasure in something because we judge it beautiful, rather than judging it beautiful because we find it pleasurable. The latter type of judgment would be more like a judgment of the agreeable, as when I say I like donuts. Second and third, such judgments are both universal and necessary. This means roughly that it is an intrinsic part of the activity of such a judgment to expect others to agree with us. Although we may say beauty is in the eye of the beholder, that is not how we act. Instead, we debate and argue about our aesthetic judgments, and especially about works of art, and we tend to believe that such debates and arguments can actually achieve something. Indeed, for many purposes, beauty behaves as if it were a real property of an object, like its weight or chemical composition. But Kant insists that universality and necessity are in fact product of features of the human mind that Kant calls common sense, and that there is no objective property of a thing that makes it beautiful. Fourth, through aesthetic judgments, beautiful objects appear to be purposive without purpose, and sometimes translated as final without end, and an object's purpose is the concept according to which it was made, so the concept of a vegetable soup in the mind of the cook, for example. An object is purposive if it is appears to have such a purpose, if, in other words, it appears to have been made or designed, but it is a part of the experience of beautiful objects, Kant argues, that they should affect us if they had a purpose, although no particular purpose can be found. Having identified the major features of aesthetic judgments, Kant then needs to ask the questions of how such judgments are possible, that, um, and are such judgments in any way valid? That is, are they really universal and necessary? It is useful It is uh, useful to see the aesthetics here, as with Kant's epistemology and to a certain extent his ethics also, as being a leap over the terms of the debate between British and Roger and Percy's philosophy of art and beauty, Shaftesbury, Hodgson, Hume and Burke, and continental rationalist aesthetics, especially Baumgarten, who invaded the modern use of the verb aesthetics in the mid-18th century. The key ideas of the former group were the idea of a definite human nature, such that studies of beauty could, without limits, be universal in scope. The second is the assertion that beautiful objects and our responses to them were essentially involved in sets of feeling and were not cognitive. Then, that any natural responses to beauty were generally overlaid by individual and communal experiences, habits and customs. The main disagreement with rationalist thought on the matter was in the second of these ideas. Baumgarten, following Leibniz, argued that all sense perception was merely confused cognition, or cognition by way of sensible images. Thus, although beauty certainly appears to our senses, this by no means demonstrates that beauty is non-cognitive. Beauty, from Baumgarten, has more to do with rational ideas such as harmony rather than with the physiological. Kant asserted the basic distinction between intuitive or sensible presentations, on the other hand, on the one hand, and the conceptual or rational on the other. Therefore, despite his great admiration for Baumgarten, it is impossible for Kant to agree with Baumgarten's account of aesthetic experience. In addition, Kant holds that aesthetic experience, like natural experience leading to de determinate judgments, is uh, inexplicable without both an intuitive and a conceptual dimension. Thus, for example, beauty is also by no means non-cognitive, as the British tradition had held. Thus, Kant begins to analyze the experience of beauty in order to ask, as precisely as possibly, the question, how are judgments about beauty possible? Kant's initial focus is on judgments about beauty in nature, as when we call a flower and sunset or an animal beautiful. Thank you very much. See you next video. Goodbye.